Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're celebrating the third Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let us begin our Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we prepare to celebrate our Mass this morning, let's take a few moments to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the country to hurt. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty more days and Nineveh will be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. 
when God saw by their actions how they had turned from their evil way. He repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory Glory to to you lord may the words of the gospel be on my mind on my lips and in my heart after john had been arrested jesus came to galilee proclaiming the gospel of god this is the time of fulfillment the kingdom of god is at hand repent 
and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little further and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning to you. I think um, if we wanted to look for uh, a phrase to cover the readings for this weekend, we might call it uh, the reluctant followers. In our first reading, we see Jonah, who is called by God to go to Nineveh, the uh, city hated by the Israelites, uh, and he's to go there and get them to repent. Now, what would happen if he did this? Well, he might be killed because they would recognize him as an Israelite and might not like him be in their town. He might be shunned or even killed when he went back to his hometown if they realized that he had converted the hated Ninevites and had God show grace and mercy upon them. So um, we're reading today uh, the second part of that, the second calling. And the first calling, Jonah just says, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> He's just, just, that's it. He doesn't say it directly to God, who would be that audacious. He just goes and gets on a boat, uh, which, by the way, is something kind of a little bit frightening for desert people who very seldom go near a boat. But he wants to get away from God. And so he gets on a boat headed for Tarshish. And um, God's not going to let him do this. He says, I called you. I told you to do something. You're not doing it. So let me get your attention. So while on the boat, uh, God sends a great storm. And everybody's frightened. And the non-Israelites on the boat start calling out, Everybody pray to your God, whoever your God may be. Ask him to have mercy on us. Finally, uh, through trial and error, they get down to Jonah and they ask him all kinds of questions. What's going on with you? You know, and uh, he finally says, look, all this is my fault. Just throw me in the water and let me drown and God will be appeased and everything will be fine. So they're like, okay, it sounds good to us. <laughs> So they throw him in, and uh, this God's not going to let him get away with it this easily. He sends a big fish. We might think it's a whale, but we don't know. And he spends three days and nights in the belly of the whale. Jesus, by the way, mentions Jonah when he talks about his three days and nights in the tomb. Jonah spending three days and nights in the belly of the whale. So then finally, he comes out. I don't know how he got out. <laughs> Probably there was a certain amount of uh, spitting involved. And then uh, God says to him a second time, as though the first time never happened, Jonah, I want you to go to the Ninevites. And Jonah, being not that dumb, goes to the Ninevites the second time. He accepts God's, uh, not request, but uh, command. And he goes to the Ninevites, but he only does the minimum. He walks through the town to say, uh, you're going to be killed if you don't listen to God and don't repent. But the, the Ninevites show more faith than Jonah, the prophet of God. They immediately repent and uh, turn their backs on sin and follow God, and God forgives them. But there's even more to the story. Jonah is unhappy <laughs> that they have repented, and he is angry at God because, again, the Ninevites, who were the enemies of his people, have repented. So um, God plays a little, not trick, but a, a demonstration of his power and also uh, a way of showing uh, Jonah what's going on. Jonah is tired, and uh, 
God makes a plant grow over Jonah's head, shielding him from the sun. Jonah is overjoyed at this plant and the shield and the shade that it gives him. But then that night, God sends a worm and the plant is destroyed. Then Jonah once again is angry at God. He gets angry at God a lot, especially for a prophet. And God simply says to him, okay, Jonah, let me ask you a question. Did you make the plant? He goes, um, no, Lord, I didn't make the plant. Is it yours to uh, make strong or to destroy? He says, it's yours, Lord. And so I did what I chose to do with that plant. Uh, did you make the Ninevites? No, Lord, I did not. Okay, so they belong to me. Yes, Lord. And I was able to have mercy on them because that was my desire. And you were sent as my minister to tell them that. So why, why are you angry that they did what I asked them to do? That they repented. So it's a little object lesson to Jonah, the reluctant prophet, that he is called by God to do God's bidding, whether it's Jonah's bidding or not. We see this in our lives as well. How many times are we called to do something that we are, don't want to do, but we know it's what God wants us to do? Uh, how many times are we called to, you know, go to church on Sunday, uh, uh, pro-life, whatever it is, give to the poor, and something that initially we don't want to do, even though we know it's what God wants. So uh, eventually, we have to submit our will to God's will, and that's not easy. Um, our will, especially in this century, is very strong and often contrary to God's will. So today we're called to listen to God, to obey God, to do God's will, even when it's contrary to our own will, even when our will is strongly against God's will. That's when we have to sit back and look at ourselves and say, where am I at? Why am I like this? Why is my will so contrary to God's will. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, where the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that it is not always easy to do God's will, we come before God with our prayers and our petitions. For the church, trusting in Jesus' constant presence, that we may act to bring the reign of God to realization in the world, loving God and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that we may repent for the wrongs we have done, whose repercussions continue to be felt, and the wrongs that we continue to do, and turn to the source of life and goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from want, from lack of shelter, heat, adequate nutrition, or health care, that they may find 
sustenance, and hope in the generosities of those with plenty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are victims of abortion, that God may touch their hearts and that he will touch all of our hearts to increase our belief in the respect for life from womb to tomb. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For religious, for women religious who have taken to heart Jesus' call to follow him, that they may be blessed in the work that they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and suffering, may our Lord embrace them with his healing arms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones and all who have died, to be welcomed into the presence of our Lord and Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all those who have no one to pray for them. And for the intentions written in our book of intentions. To be united with the mass intention of of the people of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we ask you to help us in our desire to bend our will to do your will. And we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Accept the sacrifice of your hands, hands for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, gave you thanks and praise, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, St. Philip, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who gave his life, that we might have life and have it eternally. Blessed are those who are called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ keep me safe unto eternal life. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.